Hey all, MC here, outside of the Status Center, which is home to the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab here at MIT. It's one of the most abstract buildings in Cambridge, Massachusetts. What better place to ask the question? What's an abstract? So what's an abstract good for? Do I need to read this paper? Yes. That is the single most profound question that you will be asking yourself as you go through the literature to prepare to write a report, create your own thesis, uh, whatever. You need to cite related work to say, I'm not reinventing the wheel. And so that abstract lets you know, do you need to read that paper or not? Okay, so the abstract is going to look at five things. What is the problem that's being addressed, being solved, being completed? The next thing you're going to look at is why is this problem significant or non-trivial or important to look at? That's a big part of research is finding a problem that if you solve it is going to be perceived to have a benefit contribute new knowledge. Third, what is the approach that folks are taking? This is important to understand is what's the method that's being used because that could be where the innovation is or at least that's how you're going to be able to prove that what you're doing is making the contribution or solving the problem you say that it's going to be solving. Fourth is a summary of the results. Great abstracts will cut to the chase and tell you what the significant findings were and weren't so that you can make the assessment about whether or not this article is going to be useful for what you're trying to prove. Does this result mean that the work you were thinking of doing doesn't need to be done anymore or that it didn't do what you were planning to do so that you still have room to do it? And then finally, the fifth thing that the abstract is going to give you is what's the contribution? What you might have to figure out from the abstract, they might not state this explicitly, but that you'll know is what do we have now from this work that we didn't have before? Okay, let's take a look at an example here. Suppose we're going through PubMed because we want to look at the understanding and just get up to speed on what's known about how carbohydrate and protein take it together, take it separately at different times during resistance training, has an effect on hypertrophy, it doesn't have an effect on hypertrophy, or that is muscle building. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these um, abstracts, and then we say, oh, okay, this one looks interesting. So let's go into a little bit of detail about this one that we've picked here that is called the effects of whey protein with or without carbohydrates on resistance training adaptations. In other words, uh, does body comp get affected differently depending on whether you're having protein or carbs um, around training? So we get that and we see that the important thing is we don't understand how this works. The contribution potential there is to get some better understanding. We have a methodology set up. In other words, how are they going to approach this? That's nicely specced out. They also say explicitly and bold results are coming up here. And what we find is that the results, there's a few. They're all given their p-values that say they're statistically significant. But the biggie is that the whey protein group reduced more total and abdominal area fat. And that's a big deal when you consider that most people are really interested in this thing called spot reduction. So it's a bit of a surprise that the contribution, the thing we have now that we didn't have before, is this understanding that uh, whey and carbs don't have much of a difference in terms of muscle size or strength but they do have a difference, whey does, when you're looking at fat loss. So for body comp, there's a difference. Whey protein seems to do a better job than uh, carbs. How about that? So with that overview, now you can decide whether you need to read this paper or not based on how it might fit into your particular topic. You now know, do you want to go in and read the methodology? Take a look at the results section, get some specific details from any of those results, take a look at the discussion to see how people did what they were doing, or to get more information out of the conclusion. So you figured out two things really. Do you need to read the paper? 
and if you do, what parts of the paper to read, because you don't necessarily have to read the whole thing. Okay, so now we know the main reason for an abstract is really to help you decide whether you need to read that paper, and if you do need to read that paper, what parts of that paper might be important to you for whatever it is you're trying to do in terms of your own contribution. So, what's an abstract for? Help you make a decision. How do you make that decision? You See, look for those few things. Fixes. What's the problem? What's the problem? What makes that problem significant? How'd the folks approach solving the problem? What did they get as results? And what do you have now that you didn't have before?